All right, good day to all. Sam here with you. We, uh, God, what is our date today? We're the first, it's Tuesday, May 1st today. God, I should know that. Tuesday, May 1st. And uh, we've done our polling as we do every day amongst the members. And the, uh, we have two, um, two coins we're going to review today. The first is EOS to the dollar. Now, I've got the 12 hour up here on Bitfinex. So clearly, we've been in a, some sort of, a, of an impulsive move here. Now, it's not, it's not unreasonable to call this off, off of our absolute low. And all I've done is wicked off the, the, the very lowest low I could get here. It, it's not unreasonable to look at this as a one-two. Right? I think that's, that's, that, that's quite, quite reasonable. And we can look here. If I pull from that absolute low up to my high here, well, you know, we go, we go deep. We go just a little through the 786. So certainly we have the potential for this to be playing as a two wave. Right? It's a common location for a two. Deep retracement. We have good subdivision here from my B to my C. I've got a nice clean five wave structure. I mean, it's pretty much exactly what you'd hope for if, you, if that was going to be a two, that you'd get the big rip up here. I've drawn this many times, but this is, you know, one crypto that's, that seems to be on its way to achieving some of these upper targets. So if, if, if we look here, the, if, if, if this is a one, two, and we eventually get up here to these wave three targets, negative 100 will be very close to the negative 618, or pardon me, Negative 100 will be very close to the 1618175 window. So I can draw that for you here. So if I take my low to my wave one high down to my wave two low, well, so as deep as we've gone, we've got a little bit of a gap between the two. But here, here's my target range up here for my third. So whether we make the 100, you know, we can just, let's just assume the 618. So that would mean how do we get there? So if this is the third is going in of the third, then there, there's, our, there's a reasonable target. So that, that gives us a roadmap of how we might get there. So this is certainly very encouraging. Now it's a little tricky in here in terms of whether or not we've completed something here or there, there is another leg to go. It's certainly some sort of impulsive movement. So kind of interesting here that you note, which I, I would like to think you do, is that from my swing low to my swing high, even though we go deep here to 786, look, look what we do at the algo target, right? Do you see, that's all, all I've got here. So if I, pardon me, wrong one. So if I, if I wiggle this, if I can get this, let's get that one off. How about that? So if I take my swing low, do you see the in green there? So that's, that, that's what I'm trying to get to. So from my, I can get that right on there. So from this low, despite the fact that we get through the 6.5. So it's a conundrum. You think, mm, okay, did, did algos just stay with it? Is it, you know, why do we, why do we pivot here? Well, it's a tricky one. That's certainly, that, 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 I promise you this, that's not random. So what's the explanation? Well, I don't know that I have a good one for you. It, it, this would typically be, so this was very much the target from the 65, right? We had that there, but given the break here, I don't have a good answer for you. So either the algo stayed with it or they just kept this draw because of the size of the swing. For whatever reason, clearly we get a reaction here at the algo target. Now, is that complete? Is that a three? Where are we in the count? Well, we, we've got to dig into this subdivision here so that we can make an attempt to, to qualify and quantify it because it affects where the next opportunity is. I, clearly, we want to be looking for longs here. But where is it? Are we in a three? Do we have a three, four, five? Or, you know, is, is the five already in? It's, it's tricky, tricky one. So let's, I'm at the 12 hour. I'm going to go down to the three hour. And we'll take a look at this. Now, you know, I've got the median lines on here, which help us frame the market's geometry. So here, here's our pivot up here and the reaction we've had coming off of that. Now, I got I to gotta open this up a little bit more. So let me do this here. So here's where the, the tricky part is. So we, from that pivot low, right? So here's our 786. So I'm going to take that off since we've established that now. Well, well here, here's a clear one, two. So we, we absolutely cannot ignore that. So we, we go from, from my absolute low, right? You see it, this, this, this low I'm using here, wicking it off. So right golden zone, boom, boom. So we, what do we get here? We get a golden corner pocket. Right, so there, there it is, the infamous golden corner pocket. That's the best odds in trading from that corner. If those pivots hold, we have an 80% probability of making the median line. Now, we don't know when that happens. Looked like it was on its way here. Done, 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 not until we get right here. 
do we get that 80% realized? But this market, and we get a little reaction there, but this market has more to go. So we have to break that down. So how, how can we approach that? Well, if that's a one, two, what, what, so it, you know, as the market is unfolding, of course, we're, we're relabeling as we go because there's it's just very hard. How would you know to project that? You wouldn't, right? So here's one, two. Here, here's the negative 100 common target. We, so we know, right, as I'll, I'll show it to you again, if, if, if we take the length of the one projected from the two at the 618, here we get the perfect overlap. So right here, you would have been anticipating the third relative to this one, two but much more to go. So we have to look at subdivisions. So we have an extension so from that. Then we have to start working backwards. And, and really it's just a process of trying to identify where the deepest retracements are to help us attempt to put a count on this that makes sense. And where, where we're sticking with not only Elliott Wave rule set, but tendencies and probability zones for different wave counts to to pivot. So if we look here, so this is the deep, after we get this move up here and we go to the, we get the second, pardon me, we get the negative 618, we get the second algo target here, right? So here's our, here's our 618 and then we get this retracement. Now it's relatively shallow, but it's the deepest retracement we get before we start blasting off. So process of elimination, I, I'm inclined to go one, two. So we have one, two, one, two. Now, that, that sequence of one, two, one, two, one, two, that, that's as bullish a count as you can hope for. That, that's exactly what you want to see, even though in hindsight, it may, it may feel a bit cumbersome. Wouldn't it be easier if it was just one, two, three, four, five? But, you know, that's just not how the market, market moves. And, you know, when, when you have a rip like this, this is a very high class problem to be struggling to know whether or not I've got a three in or four in or, you know, where I am in the count. All I know is that if you bought down here, you're in a, in, in a very... A very solid position. So if that's my one, two, it's the same process. We start doing the same projecting, looking for those probability zones. So I, it's it's just a process of trying to find a confluence. So if that if that's my one and I go to my two, well, I just pull this over and I start looking, do I have any impact here? Well, you know, here's the probability zone that we'd look for relative to that third. So it was tempting at that point to put the third here relative to this one, two. You're thinking three, four, and then you go up for the five. Now that that's that's possible. It's possible that that's the count that we have. So here's an alternate where you got to look at that and say, well, that could be the case. It could be, right? So one, two, here's the probability zone. Here's our four, and up we go for a five. So that's a contender, but I would show you that why that's not my primary count. That's a secondary, so that would be an alternate. Whoop. Let me grab this individually. So I still see that is going higher. Let me show you why. Because once we start moving here, well, if that's a one, two, we're anticipating that in our third, we're going to get subdivision. We want to see impulsive wave structure. And, and in order to find that, we're expecting that subdivision to happen. Well, it's the same process here. As we, so let me go down to the hourly where we dig in a little bit more to this. Well, I've got, I've got to find a five wave structure within this. <clears throat> if I've got this correctly labeled, if it's one, two, I need five waves in there. And, it, it, and as, as I arrive at this point, you know, you could, you know, you've got some shallow, you know, hesitation here before these little kicks. So if you were trying to play this, so it's not unreasonable to think you had one, two, three, four, five, right? But if I start measuring in here and I start looking, working backwards, right? So we, now here we are. So I'm going in, I'm going back after the fact here, understanding that this has been relabeled repeatedly on the move higher. So why does this matter? Well, I'm going to get to that in a second. So here we get one, two. So we have the potential now for another one, two. So if this is going to subdivide, what I what I think we have here is a completed one wave. So here, one, two, three, four, five completes a one. Then we get this retracement. This is the deepest retracement that we get before this launches. So I measure that and think, could this be the next one, too? Do we, you know, is this my subdivision? Well, it's it's not perfect, but it's potentially what we have here. This is the front run, if you can see that. <clears throat> Let me zoom in here. So in blue, this looks like a front run on my 50. It's slight, right? Just a couple bucks before it. So they, it appears to me that they've got, I've got a one, two, 
and then we and then we go into this movement here. So I've also then again got to get so, so every time I've got a, th a third wave, I've got to get an impulsive structure within it. So if I think one, two, well then I've got to have one, two, three, four, five within this third. Remember, it's waves within waves within waves. It's the fractal nature of Elliott wave. So with that, I can start measuring yet again. So if that's one, two, and I've just put in my next one, two, I'm looking for high probability zones. And I can see here, here's my negative 100. So that's a bit of a tell to me that likely I'm here at a technical pivot. So if I now going to the, the, the blue level here. So I'm taking it from my, the low of my two, which I'm proposing is the beginning of my one wave of this motive wave. And I take it from my two and I pull this over. Do you see what I get there? Absolutely perfect to the tick wave three target. So this, while it's it, it's not, you know, you, you can't be absolutely certain. All we can do is, is, is work with probabilities. So given that I've got a perfect one, six, one, eight here, that would imply to me that within this, this one, two here, that this one, two, three is accurate. That's the highest probability zone. So I play that as a three anticipating a four. Now, if this just comes screaming down, I might rethink that. But given that I've identified a contender for a third, now I'm going to do the same thing and see if does the pattern hold consistently with regard to likely pivot zones for a three, four, five. Well, here's my four right between the 30, 38 and the 50, and we're hovering right around the median line, as you'll note. This was the first time we got through the median line. So given that, that certainly is a contender, right? That's all you know at this moment in time, that I've got a contender for, the, the, for accurate subdivision here. So within my one, two, I get another one, two, I go up, I get a perfect target for my third, very high probability target for my fourth, and then I get this final rip. Again, no way to know you're getting an extension in the fifth. No way to know. So if I look here, from my two to my three, here's my four, and then I get an extension in the fifth. I go all the way to the third target, the negative 100, which tells me that likely there's an additional pivot up here. So I'm gonna take my alternate tool. Now, because I have an extension, I'm going to take the entire length, not just one, but I'm looking at the length of the third. I'm going to project from the fourth, and I'm going to look for some sort of confluence zone up here. Well, I get, I get, you know, it's not, it's not a perfect tap, but I get a confluence zone up here where I've got the 100%, the length of, in this case, in the blue, of zero of the or the start of wave one through the peak of wave three, projected from the four. Very common target in an extension like this is 100% of that length projected from the four. So I have a, a bit of symmetry here. So I get this zone here. Now I get this spike that goes through it, but then we quickly retrace that. So given, so I would certainly call this a confluence zone. So given the projections that I'm doing here, given the market's geometry here, so I've got the 300%, so I'm 300% removed from the median line on both sides that I come back here and then I go up here and I hit this confluence zone and then I get this deep reaction. This looks to me like a contender and a higher probability for this third now to be in. So this would be my third. So I'm playing this as a third and that subdivision is complete to give me my third pivot high. Well, if that's my third pivot, right? Anytime I've got a third. So let me, let me clear some of these off. Well, first thing we do is we note here, we come right back to the median line. Here's the 233, here's my Vegas wave. So given that, if that's my third, I'm gonna work just as I would with any third. I'm gonna take the length of that third from my two low to my proposed three high and look for high probability zones. Now, first thing we've done. So here, here would be the obvious zone. So you're sitting right down here. You've got the 233. You've got the median line, and you've and you've and you've got your 50%. So you're right. Additionally, you have this little zone here. So very common for the A wave to come back to revisit the prior three four. The well, we'll look down here. The prior three four of the last of the last uh, motive wave. So in this case, we're coming right back to the edge of it. You can see here that the wave three pivot high is potentially here giving us some structural support. Prior resistance offering some support. Now, additionally, we come down to our oscillators here, and we can see the absolute peak of the oscillator is here, which would imply that's a third wave of some degree. It's the highest pivot, strongest move. So that would support th this count that we've got our third wave putting in a, 
a, a pivot top up here. And then this move down here, now looking at it as I just kind of eyeball it, we'll dig in a little more. That certainly looks like a five wave structure. Five waves down in a corrective move like this would imply an A wave. So likely contender here is that we've got our A wave in. We're, we're heading into our B wave and then we'll eventually come down here and put in a C. We don't, we don't know where, we need a contender here. So maybe, maybe we have a flat correction. Here's my, here's my 618 down here. We don't know, but we know that for this to play as a three, four and the four coming in somewhere over here, the depth of the retracement, we don't want it to go too far. So as we go, if we were to go to the 618, we're reducing the probabilities of getting to, to, to new highs. I mean, it doesn't eliminate it, but we know the higher probability zone for a wave four is to be between the 38 and the 50, right? So in a very strong market, you're looking for it between the 23 and the 38. Right, that's the that's that's a very strong market. So we've already gone through that. So next zone is 38 to the 50 here, where we have potential now for to get algos working with us. So is that a front run on the 50? Possibly. Well, that's you know, 1590 down here. We're at 1530. It's possible. It's possible. What I see is I see five waves down. So here's where maybe a combination of Elliott and just straight algo pulls is beneficial to us. So we can anticipate now, since we've had five down, the highest probability is that I've got I've got my A wave going in right here, right? And it's technical. And we, if I go down, let's uh, go. Where are we? Thirty minute. Okay, that'll work. So let's look in here. This looks like a, a strong contender. So I can I can pretty quickly see. Uh, well, it looks to me like here here's an ABC into a into a well wrong one. Sorry guys. I want a five wave structure. That's what I want. So come here, there we go. Okay, so from that, it looks to me like one, two, this looks like I've got potentially three, four, five. So let's think now. So what, what, what do we have? So let me, let me lower that degree. Let's go, um, we'll go into yellow and we'll go, um, no, let's do it in, we'll do it in blue and let's go down to sub micro. Okay, so there we have that. Now look, look here, so I've got one, I've got potentially now one ABC, classic two wave here. It couldn't be any more technical, just a perfect ABC. Well, then I come down and it would appear that I've got three waves. So that would imply that, that potentially now we've got another kick on this. So if that's a one, two, or you could think of it was A, B, that could be C, but we, we wanna look now here. So if I take from my two to my three, I'm anticipating, or where's the most, most likely zone for a pivot? Let's see if I got this, is this too, too crowded for you guys? Let me, here, I'll take this. Uh, let's take, well, I guess you can see it. All right, so let, let's think about that. So here's one, two, three with an ABC in the third, an ABC potentially in the fourth. So if you can see it here, so if I wiggle this, if I come down, you see we go literally right, here's the 38 in gray. We literally go right to it and tick it. Not to mention we go right into the lips of the Vegas wave. Just an absolutely perfectly technical pivot. Doesn't, doesn't get any better. Now that does not guarantee that we're going down here. We, we may take this out. It may, this may be AB. It may a, B, we have to look at this. So it, give, given that we have the potential here for a diagonal, which we would anticipate that as a likely location for that would be in an A wave. So potentially we have a leading diagonal given the three wave structure that we're seeing. It's a contender. So if that's, if that's going to be a three wave, so eh, let, me, let me take this off because I know this is getting hard to see. Okay, if that, so I've got to wick off the one wave low. I gotta pay attention to that. Because if we're gonna come from this two, so if we're gonna take out that wave one low, then we'd have the ingredients here for a diagonal. We'd have one, two, an ABC into our third, and potentially now we'd have an ABC going in here in our fourth. So this may be a B, C going up here, we don't know. Can't tell yet, because I've got a little three wave here as I just showed you. So either, here's how we're gonna know. Either this is going to continue to move higher and we're gonna, we're gonna challenge that wave one low. Note here, we'd be coming right to the 618, right? Of course, right to the 618. That would give us lower targets down here. So you can see the algo target here below the 50. So this zone potentially moves down here. Contender for an A wave. 
Well, how are we going to know? We're not going to know until we see how this resolves. Is are we are we putting in a one, two, or an A B to give us a the, the the fifth down here for this to stay as an impulsive wave? A little bit tricky because that certainly looks like a three wave structure. So you know, you, you got to make a judgment call here, right? So if you're trading this as a one, two, or, or the A, B of the, of the fifth of a diagonal, it becomes a question, is there enough juice there? Is, if that's a one, two, and my target is down here, is there enough reward potentially there? Come here, damn it. Is there enough reward getting down here to warrant the risk? Well, your stop would be right here on the, on the, on the proposed A wave pivot at our, at our 38. So it's a relatively low risk. But if you think about that for a short and you say, okay, well, I'm going to short it right here because I think that might be the one, two going in. My stop's on the other side of that A wave. My target is down here. There's the algo target. So it's, it's not terrible, right? So that's almost five to one. If, if, we, if you're entering right here right now, just about five to one. So something to think about. If this is going up higher here, well, then we have the contender potentially setting up as a diagonal. So we'd have this, we'd label this here, come here as an ABC. So this would be A, B. We'd be down into the C to give us our third down here. I guess we can go lower. Let's go blue. We'll go down. So, okay. Do you see it? So we'd have... One, two, A, B, C into the three. We, now we have to get we have to get beyond this wave one high per Elliott rule set to get a diagonal. We got that's that's a condition that's mandatory for for us to qualify this as as a diagonal. So given that the potential is there, if we come up here, so either you want to take that here as a five to one, nothing wrong with that, right? If you're comfortable going short, or you're going to wait and see how this resolves and wait for either the buy down here. Right, try, so at that point, note you'd be trading into the B wave. Your anticipation would be that you're not going to new highs, that you've got an A wave in, you're going up for the B. For sake of example, if I, if I pivot there. So now I'm hypothetical. If I come down here and I put my, <clears throat> excuse me, my A wave low in here, well, then my target here for the B wave, if I'm down here, my target for the B wave is anywhere from the 50 to 618. So, that, I mean, there's, that's, that's, not a bad, that's not a bad trade, right? So you're, at, you're not anticipating new highs, even though it's possible. But that's, you know, now we, now we reverse this and we go back to the long position. We say, well, okay, if I'm a buyer here, I'll split the difference. And I've got a target up here of the 618. And I'm going to put my stop, you know, relatively close. There's seven points. You know, I mean, it depends how much risk you're comfortable giving it. If we put in a technical pivot down here, you wouldn't need to give it much, right? So you want to, would make a, a, a new low would stop you out. But if you can get a pivot down here, if we hit these technical targets, uh, 7.2 to 1, nothing wrong with that. So I guess my broader point is, you know, nothing wrong with trading a B wave. Right, that can be a good leg, and those those that can break the six. That can get up to the seven eight six. Right, nothing wrong with it. Although I'd certainly be banking profit if we come up and challenge the golden zone. Right, you got you got to think about it right here at the fifty. Maybe that's a partial, and if you get the last kick, well, that's just the gravy getting to the six one eight. You know you're gonna hit you're gonna hit resistance up here. The algos kick in to sell it there. So you you have a potential roadmap here with this variance here. Where are we? So safer play, more conservative thing to do. Wait to see how this resolves, and then either you're a seller up here, right? So either you're playing that short side, looking for that that new algo target. Either you're a seller here, looking for this move down to complete this this leading diagonal. Here's my fifth to give me my fifth to give me my A wave. Either I'm a short seller going down looking to target the A to quickly then turn around to, sh to target the long to catch the B to then quickly turn around to catch the short to get, to get the C. Right? That, that's the, that would be your triple play. That's, that's the perfect scenario. Right? Now, does it, does it play that way? Well, it certainly could. It, was, it certainly is a, is a viable roadmap for us to see this resolve and ultimately come all the way back to where we started, which is... Well, we've got one hell of a move on our hands. And if this is going to play, now we put it into context. Okay, if we're coming down here, well, we have a contender for the fourth to be getting that low. We know, I mean, you, you think about here, given the, the, the size of the third, to go that deep on the fourth and then, and then go up and kick for that fifth, 
I mean, you know, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me by any means. We, we, I mean, I think we can all agree how strong of a project EOS is. I mean, this is this is one of our majors. So the, the, the possibility that we could see this kind of technical trading is certainly quite high. And given the extreme, the, the, this extension that we saw here in the third, which, by the way, is where we'd anticipate it. But we, we, we caught the extension in the third of the third. Right. So here in the larger degree, we're still we're still at one, two. We're still in the third wave. Per, at least per my primary count. So all we're trying to do is, is find trading within, <clears throat> within the fourth wave that's going on right now. So we, we go into the 30 minute and you can see that we've got some five to one, seven to one. I mean, there's good trading in here. But if you step back from it and look at where, where are we likely going? Well, you wanna be conservative? I would certainly be looking for buy side only given the wave count. If you're just as comfortable going short as long, there's certainly some meat in there to be trading on the short side, given the volatility that we've had, given the size of this swing. So an A to a B, that that's a that's not that's not a bad looking trade. As we look there, there was 7.26 to one in there. If we just go to a common target for a B, so you got to choose your spots and think about you know am I, do, do I want to be going short in EOS here? I mean that's. My bias certainly would be looking be looking for long. So I, I would be more prone to be waiting for those high probability zones to be looking to get long because I, I've got so much upside here. So if this is three, four, five, I'm still just putting in the third wave relative to this one, two. Four inevitably coming if we get up and get that, meaning five and the third relative to that very largest degree. So if I take us all the way back to where we started and we put the whole thing in context, where are we trying to get to, right? Remember, if that's if that's one, two, right? I mean, three, we're up here at $34. What are we now, $17? So there's a clean double if we're going there. More than, more than that, I should say, more than that, right? So potentially now, so look what we'd have here. We'd have second algo target. If we're gonna tap that 618 from here, we'd have second algo target. If we're gonna go all the way back, to the two here where we don't know where we find that three and we're going to come all the way back here right i mean there's there's lots of different ways that this could go but they all are right now pointing to higher prices eventually so here's the relative to this one two here's the target so if you keep that in mind until this breaks down where we we where we have to disqualify that as as a potential roadmap that's that's what you're trading for that's that's the target that's what you're trying to get to. All of this, just about where can I get on board to eventually be there when we get that target? And how can I do it along the way with reasonable risk? Because of course you could just say, well, shit, man, I'll just buy it here and target's up here. What's the problem? Well, I mean, you know, it just comes back to, do you want to trade with precision? Are you comfortable, you know, exposing yourself to the potential drawdown that's there? You know, you can, you can look at it that way and say, well, I'm just an EOS bull, so I want to throw some capital in there. There's no, that's, I'm not advocating against that. I'm showing you a way, though, that if you want to be more precise about how you approach it and you want to avoid, if we get into something where we have a, a substantial downturn and you've just you've, you've parked some dollars, and in this case it would be dollars, and you park dollars in there, it's just a matter of, opportunity cost, right? So now you're buried in EOS because you're underwater. So now you've become, you know, your long-term holder and you're hanging on for dear life because you, you're convinced eventually you're getting there. Well, eventually you may be right. So what, again, trader's choice. Are you okay if you park some, some dollars there and just ride it out until eventually you get there? It's, it's, that's not an unreasonable position to take. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. If you don't want to go through all this work, I mean, you can certainly look here and, and, and think to yourself, well, I've had, a, I've had a pretty substantial move here. The retracement's going in, seems like a reasonable place. You know, look, look here, I'm just, I'm right, I'm right at this prior resistance. I'm right in that zone. Not a bad place to be looking to be a buyer, maybe a break here. I mean, you know, it's all, it's all just a question of how you want to approach the market. You want to be precise? Well, we can, we can certainly help you be, be precise. You know, this methodology is how you get yourself in, into the market here and, re, and reduce and lower the amount of risk that you're taking. You want, to, want to buy and hold? Well, you know, it's, it's not an unreasonable position to take for, for a project like EOS, right? So you have to be, just be a long-term believer. 
I see all sorts of opportunity in here. As a, as essentially, I'm a swing trader. As a swing trader, this is just meaty. Wait, this is what you want. You wait for this. You got volatility. You've got extensions. You've got deep retracements. You've got good technical trading. You know, algos are all over in here. This is what you. This is why we trade crypto to get this kind of price swing. I'm going to make a decision. How do you want to approach the market? All right, so if this interests you, come on over. If you haven't been there already, take a look at what we offer to you over at Trade Devils University. We'd go take very, very deep dives into this methodology and teach you how to do it for yourself. That's the point of this. Every video that you see is me just applying this in real time. Here's everything we teach applied to the hard red edge of the market. This is the analysis I'm doing. This, all I'm doing is showing you my analysis. Right, you want to learn how to do it? Well, we can we can teach it to you. It's it's not that any one thing that we're teaching is particularly hard. It's putting it all together. That's a little tricky and takes some practice. That's that's the purpose of our Discord and the material that we're teaching. A place to come practice, get counsel, talk to experienced traders, look get idea ideas and input and ex exchange just the mental power of, you know, several hundred people with a similar passion for trading crypto with precision and for just trading in general as we're now you know working in multiple different markets this methodology applies to any any market doesn't matter what it's the same thing exact same reasons exact exact same movement what's different is that we have a, a, this potential for this explosive asset class to be taking us into into to levels that we haven't seen just yet. And the idea is that we're just getting started in crypto. That these are all just, everything we've seen, these are all just one waves, right? It's, it's just beginning. How do you want to play? All right, guys, I'll wrap it there.